second official board meeting. Uh, Steve is behind the curtain recording. Um, so I hope so. Um, so everyone should have a printed agenda in front of them. Oh, oh that's a dinner. Sorry. Eric's <laughs> like out there. Um, so the first thing would be um, to approve the minutes. Did everyone have a chance to take a look at them? Did I get all the things? Did I miss any of the things? Okay. All right, so if there aren't any issues, I would say let's move to approve the minutes. Everyone agree? Say aye. 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 Sweet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Housekeeping. Um, board membership changes. So since we were last together, um, Mr. Couch, the councilman, um, has um, needed to step down. He coaches um, wrestling. He's like, this, it was much more time than he could devote to this. So he stepped down, and so City Council voted in Alexis Woods. <laughs> so Alexis is on Council. She's awesome. We're thrilled to have her. Um, also since the last meeting, Jennifer Green, who was with the Health Department, her contract ended um, unexpectedly, and so she no longer works for the Health Department, so she could not be on the board. Hmm. So we have, so Keith and I um, had an opportunity to meet with um, Shireen, who's with the health department. She is amazing. Um, and actually, do you want to just come up and tell a little bit about yourself? Just, just a little, just a little <laughs> bit. I could read you what she sent me. I mean, we're really pretty lucky, but it would be nice to hear from you. So just stand up to the microphone and... <laughs> okay, my name is Shuin and I come from Egypt. I left there most of my life. I moved to Cincinnati six years ago with my family. Uh, started a career and continued my career in public halls as a research assistant with Dr. Um, Menda Putspasek on a project that involves community engagement. It's mainly a, um, um, a community-based participatory research to enhance uh, health and uh, promote um, STEM education career for underserved communities, mainly at, at targeting the uh, West End population, West End Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, from there, I was like, it was a really engaging opportunity I had working with uh, people in the West End and designing the program material, doing mentoring students, being English students. So this was really an, a nourishing experience for me. I had to stop working because of issues uh, it's really related to my work permit, so I had to pause for um, a while, but I, things changed, so now I was introduced to uh, Pam through my former um, employee, Ms. Um, Dr. Busevacic, and she recommended me to the job. I accepted it with delightfulness. <laughs> it's really experiencing the public health side in, like, in practice and operation is different from what I have been doing for, for, for the whole of my life. It was mainly education and research. Now I'm, I'm more, more into the field part of it. Yeah, so. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So she will bring um, a whole different, um, Jennifer's amazing, um, you're, you're going to be bringing a different skill set, and we're, we're thrilled that you're, you're volunteering to, to step up when we need you. Um, 
so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So what will happen this uh, evening uh, is I'll make a motion to have her fill in that vacant spot and then council will vote her in and then she'll be in that spot. Cool. Make Sounds sense? Good. Yep. Okay. Um, assign the role of secretary. So last time I did the minutes, if need be, I can do them again, but if someone else is good at that or wants to do it or wants to volunteer, I would happily. Am I allowed to do it? <laughs> okay. okay, awesome. I'm doing it anyway. Okay, <laughs> she's doing it anyway. <laughs> Already her notes are better than mine. No, 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 it's for me personally, and I already uploaded them into our share drive, which I created like 20 minutes ago. So. Okay, so um, I think. The 12th meeting and then today I'll add as well. You're awesome. Okay, so well. thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And check. Okay, um, meeting schedule. So one of the things we talked about is if it would be easier for us to have like a standing once a month meeting and then the subcommittees can just kind of do that less formally because that doesn't need, the subcommittees won't need to be um, um, published or um, um, videotaped or all that. Right. Like if Alexis and I just meet for coffee to talk about a grant, then we can just do that ad hoc. Um, so does once a month work for you guys? Yes. And six o'clock work for folks? Yes. Okay. Um, does the day of the week matter to anyone? Yes. Okay. Tuesdays do not work for me, like January through May. Okay. So, sorry. So, no. <laughs> So Wait, no, let's, any other day of the week is typically fine, though. Okay. So, anyone else have a day of a week that does not work? She's flexible. Okay. Even though you're not official, we want to make sure. Okay. Good thinking. Um, I don't want to do it on a Monday. Nobody wants to do it on a Monday. No one wants to do it on a Friday. So, at least Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday. So let's. It's going to be the second Wednesday of the month. That's my um, <laughs> civil service. <laughs> okay. Do we want it to be then the first Wednesday of the month? Okay. Well, that would be then the fourth, so we could skip January. We can. Yeah. Just... Or we could do the third Wednesday, which would be the 18th of January, and then the 15th of February. Oh, do you have some travel stuff? I have me? a conflict on the 18th. Oh, okay. <laughs> but third Thursday is Earth. Well, see. How does the I first Thursdays a... look? No, yeah, Wednesdays. Wednesday. Uh, first look fine. I, I could maybe sit out that Wednesday or whatever. But going forward, then I would. I would know. Um, I could potentially reschedule that as well. But uh, we're not doing the fourth, right? Next correct. Week. Okay, good. Because I can't do the fourth. <laughs> do you want to just do the first Wednesday of the month? I'm fine with that. And then we skip January. We'll, and skip we'll, start, January. Yeah. we'll start February okay. first. Okay. First Wednesday of the month, not January. Julio. All right. So next date would be February first. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, we won't. Oh my gosh! And then March first. Sweet. And then. Oh. Which is my birthday, but I will hold off on my plans. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, I know. I'm we'll make a cake. Super busy. So oh, sorry. March is? March 1st? March 1st, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make a note to bring you a cake. It may or may not be a significant birthday. I don't know what I'm saying. It's kind of a big deal. So They're all significant. Drink. Oh, uh, this, yeah, we should definitely have some. Beverage after. Yes. yes. After the yes, meeting. But not together. But we not together. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Google Drive. Sharing the documents. So... First of all, did everybody get the Google files I sent? And that was accessible. Okay. And then Stephanie, awesome, put it in a drive that we should all be able to access. Um, so Wait, thank you very much. Yeah, was, I, I'll need to share the... I wasn't sure if I could reply all to that email, so I will need to share the... You can, you can send us all an email with the info. Okay. We just can't then reply, reply back. Okay. And you can always give out information. You just can't have a discussion. Okay. So I will share um, the. It's 
uh, Norwood Ohio DEI at gmail.com. Sweet. And um, I will share the password via email, um, which will come from yeah, yes. you. But you, right, like yeah, not Gmail. So anyway, I won't email on behalf of like from the Norwood. From the Nor Yeah, because I'm, I'm with confusing, you. Using I think so. Sweet. All right. Next, the culture audit questionnaire. Did everybody get a chance to look at it? I did not. Okay. I did. That's all right. So, Derek, what were your first impressions? So, um, I know you said it was pieced together from several different, and I assumed that wasn't like the final product in any way. Correct. Um, so, uh, just from my own perspective, uh, like the initial questions, I felt without some kind of precursor, that was a trick, <laughs> um, <laughs> would um, be, could be perceived as in like uh, intrusive and... Uh, oh, to have like an introductory, yeah, this is I'm what a, we're doing? Well, yeah, this something is why that, you know, it. is just kind of let people, you know, especially people in sensitive communities, let them know that this is not in the times that we're living in, mm -hmm. some kind of, you know, we're tracking you right. down type right. of a... Uh, so yeah. there would definitely be an explanation and it would, it would talk about um, it being a blind survey. Um, yeah, a lot, and that takes us to um, the methods of distribution. Um, we have a couple options. Um, none of them are, are ideal. Um, but let's say we do a survey monkey. Uh, the problem with that is it costs money. But let's say we have, we're doing that. At the beginning is an explanation of what the survey is and why we're doing it. It would say, this is completely voluntary. You're not required to do this. Um, this is information will not be shared with, you know, it, there's like a disclaimer in it. Yeah. It explains. Um, uh, this is for the internal one, right? This is the internal one, yeah. Um, I think it would be great if we could all time ourselves taking it ourselves, pretending that we're the employee, um, because I think that would be helpful if it turns out it takes 20 minutes. Okay, that we might need to sweeten the pot. Is there, like, you know, if you do it, you're put in for a random drawing, and SurveyMonkey has a capacity to do that where you can still, um, it's still blind your information, but we know that Sally did it, right? And so then Sally would be put in the drawing for the thing. Um, uh, um, but from just the questions themselves, Derek, was there anything that struck No, that you was the only. Is it needs a. Uh, and I assume intro. there would be some kind of in your introduction. What all do you think needs to be? In, I'm gonna. I'm writing it right on the document. That it's yeah. that it's blind. That it's. It's not anonymous, though, right? It would be. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I can do these surveys within Haycor. So if this is the internal one, so you mean like the benefit survey, engagement survey, or I can just create a whole blank survey, and then. So in, so like the confidential type, or I can do non-confidential. Um, is there a limit to how many questions oh, that can be on there? I just missed that part. Is this, okay, I see. Next. Oh, to add a question. So like, you could do like the drop down radio buttons or all that stuff. This would take, I mean, I would just have to create a manual. Upload, yeah. Uh, and then just copy and paste whatever's there. So for the internal piece, we can use Paycor, and then I can just, send it out to everyone that's on Paycor, which is everyone in the city. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry, I missed um, the thing blaring at the top that says anonymous. Oh, I just put it in there. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> <thank you. laughs> I mean, we weren't judging you or anything, Derek. Yeah, so right, right, like, oh. right. Because I just, yeah, I wrote, needs the introduction. Like I can see her in there. She's not lying. It's Brian's making it. Blind anonymous. What's the other word that um, um, you don't have to take it? 
It's voluntary. It's voluntary. voluntary. Thank you. The purpose. And then, you know, in order to try to get as many folks to do it as possible, um, what would people think about, um, like if you were an employee and you got this, you know, I'm thinking like how many times you go to Target and get fill out the survey, and sometimes I'm like, sure, and sometimes like, oh my God, one last survey. What, what are the things that you think might encourage an employee to fill it out that we might be able to provide them? One thing you could do is talk to, make sure that the elected officials are okay with it, but you could offer like vacation day, which oh. isn't any like. That's a big one. That's big. That's huge. Yeah. I would which, take a survey. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, vacation like, day might be better you than you the gift card. To, right. Get the elected officials approval because yeah. then it's coming out of their budget. Yeah. But if well, it's I don't like, think we have a budget. Day. Well, it, it would come out of their payroll budget. That's yeah. because if they're getting an extra day off, that's Would that's it be saying. everyone who fills it out gets an well, extra you can day just off? Put it on a drawing. Oh, not, not ever. A drawing. For but, but you don't know who's going to get it. Uh, so yeah. like one of your employees might get an extra day. Are you okay? Ooh. So it would just be one day's pay. Yeah, you're just going to get an extra eight hours, or because if it's a fireman, you'll get an extra 24, or mm -hmm. what, just one day. Um, That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, another would be gift card. Yeah. Maybe make it a tiered type of a thing, too. Ooh, like maybe th maybe we have three different things. You get yeah. the gift card. You can take it within the first week. You oh. get in the pool Ooh, or the day off. Yeah. And then within the first month, it's gift card, within the first, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. If, I would, I would probably just say you have X amount of days to do it, and then we'll first draw, then just do like a tier drawing, and then if you don't do it by the state, you're not in the drawing. And then yeah. if we get the information, we'll just get the information, but you're no longer okay. in the drawing. What are some gift cards that would make it worth your while? Kroger? I do. Amazon. Gas? Amazon? Amazon. Local restaurant? I mean, I would probably maybe try to do some local stuff in there. Mm hmm yeah. There's a way in this system that if you take it, it flags that you've taken it, but not what your results are. And you could, so it's separated. Yeah. And you can also do things like, do you want to enter into this? And then it becomes not anonymous. So if you want to enter into the drawing, it becomes, no, you're no longer anonymous because we have to know who you are. Um, <clears throat> But, it, but it's their choice. So if they say no, they can still take the survey. But the survey results are still the anonymous. The survey results are still anonymous, but the name of the person that took it is not. Yes. So, okay. so because if they're anonymous, we'll, we will know. I think if, when I've done it, it in the past, it, it like opens a new window, so it like takes you somewhere different yeah. for that part. <clears throat> So maybe it disassociates. But then you know who mm -hmm. took it. So it's like, so if you only have like two people that took it, oh. taking it, you know, or one person that took it. Could we do a test just like with the, this group and see what it looks like? We could, and I would have to see if there is that option here. Because I don't know if Paycor has that option to do mm. a drawing or like to randomly select someone. Hmm. So, so I, if, so I, if we, I'm sorry. Okay. Go, go, go. So I just want to say, if we use Paycor, I don't know if a drawing would work. But okay. I, I would. I may want to let me contact Paycor tomorrow okay. and see if they're if they have an option to. Because I could learn about the different types. Really? So you'll find out about yeah. Paycor doing that. Did you have another option? Yeah. Stephanie? So at, in um, my previous employer. Um, we, we did this exact same thing um, for employee survey. And it, like I said, you, you, oh, yay, you did this, click here to be entered into the gift card drawing. Mm -hmm. And it opens a new window. And so I don't, I can find out where that came from. Okay. Whether it came, because we also use Paycor. Mm -hmm. um, so I, or you can contact whoever. But if it's something yeah. different than Paycor, yeah, cause, I can yeah. let you know. Cause Cause it because doesn't, it didn't look. Like it looked like something completely different. Because you have to pay for this module and like okay. within Paycor, so okay. your company may have not have paid for this module, I'm so sure then it might be not. cheaper no. to do something else. <laughs> I don't yes. know. But we pay for it, so I was just like, 
to use it if we can. Mm -hmm. um, Low tech, couldn't they just take a picture of the finished, you know, mm -hmm. thank you for blah, 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 mm -hmm. and then just email, email it to us. Just mm -hmm. things and that to like a standard, standard you know, special. central email. Yeah. And then that would kind of have a time code of, you right, know, right, time stamp. It. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, which department has the highest? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's. Mm -hmm. Send them lunch. Mm -hmm. The Winnie department gets pizza. Pizza pretty good. I can actually ask people. Oh, okay. So people in the department, the most department submissions would win something also with that mm -hmm. Yeah, these are just ideas. The only thing so with that can, is if you have three people in your department versus, versus 52, the, yeah. you know, all three people do <laughs> that. Versus three <laughs> people in another one, yeah. Oh, that's right. really like the whole police department did not take it. That's weird. Because we have that. We have our water department only has three people in it. Oh, right. And then we have the fire department, which has 52. Oh. Um, and then... <laughs> Well, then but, it's even. Yeah. But then again, you only have two people take it versus yeah. twenty, right. and then that two people is more than fifty percent. So it's just. I, what's the um, well, to keep it What's the total employees for the city and health department altogether? In the health department. The all city employees. In oh, the all health. city employees. I think like two twelve altogether, give or take. So if we get. 50%, I mean, so that, we get a pizza party. That I mean, you could just do that to where it's like if we have. A certain percentage of everyone, but then you're buying. That's a lot that is a lot of pizza. That's a lot of pizza. Uh, that was and kind of a joke because that's like the cure all for like <laughs> yeah. management's always like pizza party yeah. instead of more money. You know? Yeah, I'd but be more motivated by money than a pizza party. Same. Yeah. Yeah. No, same. <laughs> um, so if we have two hundred and twelve ish total employees, yeah. um, man, it would be great to get at least a hundred people responding. So I currently active, that. I have 225, but that is um, seasonal and part-time people and everything. Okay. Oh, is that on here if you're full or part-time? Do we care? I would, oh, yeah, so. I would probably like to know that, full, part-time, seasonal, regular. Uh, because if you're a seasonal person, you're most likely in the rec department, which I guess maybe not seasonal because then that kind of Probably parks. Yeah, parks and yeah. folks who do work when it's busier. Um, I would probably say seasonal people, I would just say may not take this then. They mm. probably want to get it. But that's but then can you see who is seasonal? Like and then you can take that number out. Okay. But who but if there are people who are doing like snow removal this time of year who are seasonal then then they yeah. would take it. So But most of our seasonal people are in uh, the rec department, yeah. not in mm -hmm. uh, Oh no! Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because we have, we had typically only do one seasonal in um, public works, gotcha. and they're already done. Got it. So I don't think there's anywhere on here that says your working status. Do we do a lot of part time like admin staff? Mm -hmm. Do you live here? Our new secretary for council. Um, we are we're voting on it tonight. I think that's worth it to know that. <laughs> um, okay, I'll just stick it up. Do you currently live in the city? I thought there was a thing about how long you've worked here, but I'm not seeing it on here at all. No? Okay, we'll just put, I'm just going to put it in and we'll find a better place. Um, do you work full time? Part time and then seasonal. All right. So then I would say our homework is for everyone to take it and time yourself. Or do you want to do that after you input it into the system? Uh -huh. The questionnaire. 
What? I'm for sorry. us to take it, to time it. Should we wait till after it's formatted? <laughs> yeah. To Probably take it formatted, again? yeah. Yeah, okay. So we won't do that yet. Um, so then the methods of distribution, looks like Paycor is probably going to be our best bet. Yeah, um, I just asked him if we're able to randomize a prize to win. Um, if not, I mean, we could do his idea of just, hey, send an email to the, my, my email or your email or whatever, mm -hmm. and then that person would be, I mean, because we don't know their responses, we'll just know that they took it. Right. But I would be hard surprised for them not to be able to do this. But that's but who knows? Okay. Um, so then we will hold off on the rest of that until our next meeting. Anything else on the DEI culture audit? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. MLK Day of Service and Blood Drive. So let me pull that up. So Jennifer Green um, thought that we were all good to go for the blood drive, but that was not accurate. Um, I spoke with the woman uh, from Hawksworth who arranges them, and MLK Day is historically a, the biggest blood drive day, oh. and so usually they are all down at the Freedom Center, so all their, all their staff is there doing the blood drive. Um, but since COVID, they've shut it down uh, hopefully they'll bring it back next year, but they're so lightly staffed right now, um, they're just understaffed, that she's like, yeah, even if, we're, even though we're not doing it there, we still couldn't do it in Norwood. So we have a couple options. One, say, well, it was a great idea, it's not happening. We could do a virtual blood drive, which um, I think is an interesting idea. The way a virtual blood drive would go is um, the city would be given a code and we would publicize the code. So in the month of January, go to your local Hawksworth Center, donate blood, give them your code. And then at the end of the month, we'd say, Norwood donated 20 bo bottles, 20 gallons of, <laughs> of blood. Um, and then we could also do the same thing about incentivizing it by we have, you know, um, Hawksworth will give us the list of the people who donated, and then we could do another random draw for, again, one of those things. Um, it's not as rah rah, we're all going to do this right now, let's go down to the truck. Um, but, we could, but. Could we do both? Have a day where people will just show up and then. But people can go any time during that month. Um, so the way Hawksworth works is you would go, you'd make an appointment mm -hmm. to go. So we couldn't say we're all coming on this day because I would have to make an appointment and then you would have to make an appointment. Does that make sense? For the virtual? Yeah, well, well I, I guess what I'm saying is like if we could have like a blood drive here with them coming here, and then if you're not able to make it, then they could make an appointment on a different day and okay. still have the virtual for the rest of it. Like, if you can't make it on this Wednesday, you could go anytime during this month, just make this appointment. Gotcha, so they wouldn't be able to do a in-person drive here until probably the spring. Oh, okay, Sorry. so we're, we're stuck with a virtual if we want to do one. So. Correct. Okay. I think that seems cool. Mm -hmm. I don't ever, I don't know what the standard gal, I don't know how many pints or whatever you donate, I never, remember that about myself like to have that grand total you know whatever 200 gallons of blood or that's probably a lot but that'd be a lot <laughs> I'd be, I'd be yeah. so impressed I mean like you know every single normal resident does it we can make it happen but I think that that bigger number would be really cool to present and mm -hmm. people you know doing it on your own time and there's a ton of different Hawksworth locations I, I I think that's great I agree like it'd be fun to go as a group but um, sometimes it just doesn't work um, did they mention that they would you know, they do like t-shirts and socks and stuff like that for the giveaway. Every month that changes, did mm -hmm. they say anything about having, I mean, I'm sure that we would be eligible Well, you would that. get, yeah, you would get whatever they have. Um, that would be something I think that we would provide. Okay. Um, and I don't know that they would have it there. 
it would be something we would have to get to the person. You know what okay. I mean? Because they've got like what, 12 different satellites. A lot, yeah. So it's not like we could make a bunch of t-shirts and then have them. Right. You know? Okay. Um, we could mail them out or drive, yeah. them, drive them by. But either way, it, that is some incentive, the swag. It's not. So, so if we want to move forward with the virtual blood drive, um, we're going to need to do a, a social media post. Um, we would also, and we could still have it be with the MLK Day of Service stuff. Sure. So when we're doing it, we can have MLK Day of Service and then the virtual blood drive, and it could be in the same like QR code that would link us to to all the information. Do we have a QR code generator? Yes. Council does? Um, Cause I've been looking into that for the city. I just did it. My intern taught me how to do it. <laughs> you, you just, you, you do it on your computer somehow. She you showed did, me. You did it for a Hispanic Heritage Festival. I did, yeah. she showed me yeah. and now I've forgotten. It's really easy. <laughs> So is it like an app or is it actually on your computer? It's like on your, like you press a button and it. There's a free QR code generator so on the website that I just found. So in my research in that, um, the free ones, they will sell your data. Mm -hmm. So oh. that is the issue that I was looking into for the city to purchase, but they have to have a credit card and the city doesn't like doing no. credit cards. So, which is why I'm pushing to being able to use one. We... Um, uh, I don't know about selling the data. Well, that's a little horrifying. Yeah, so that's why I was like, I, you always want to do a paid one, just because the, the reason why it's free is because they sell the data, and that's how they make their money. Now, a generator that's already on your computer might not do that. I do not know. Yeah, see, right here, share this tab. It's like a tab. You copy the link, and it makes it. Oh. <laughs> I will look into that. Because I, because the only reason why I said that is like I found one, but they do not take purchase orders, and I got Noah on board to purchase it because we could get like twelve. And then I would give one to like council, or the mayor would have one. And then, cause I was gonna use it for recruiting and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, but, and it wasn't really that expensive. It was like $120 for the year or something like that. It really huh. wasn't that expensive. And you would get up to 12 and then they're dynamic. So then you can change them out whenever you want. So once my job posting is done, someone else can use it. So he said that there, is, there should be a way to ask a question to make their identity public, or not public, but like for us. So and then we would at least, you would ask them saying, hey, um, would you consent to re reveal your identity if you want to be entered into this prize? And then I would have it, their identity, and then we would just use that to do a raffle. Either way, we so, would have to have their identity. Their identity, but not their information. Not the that, but not the results. The, their yeah, the identity would not be tied to their results. Yeah. It would just be like, would that. you be willing to make your... We know that these two people took it. But I don't know what questions they, they answered. answered. Okay. So I'm going to look more into this. They gave me some links. Um, and I'll look more into this, and I can have it. I can email you guys once I... Okay. Sweet. Because <clears throat> this is all. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, and I may be able to watch YouTube videos on this too. Okay. Um, in terms of the day of service, um, I have spoken with um, a couple: Baby Bear, Woven Oak which is Zion Church. Um, so Baby Bear is the organization that does um, diapers and clothes for little ones. Um, Woven Oak Zion Church is a food pantry. They had a group of, um, it was the Boy Scout, Cub Scouts that were there last year. Um, Norwood Together 
um, could do up to five volunteers to do the welcome bags. I've been playing phone tag with Captain Cleveland with the Salvation Army, but I think that they're interested in participating. Um, Dress for Success is here in Norwood. Um, they are not open on MLK Day, and that's not an option for them to become open. Um, but they could take volunteers any day that week, Tuesday through Thursday from 9 to 4, and that would be managing clothing donations. So we could say, like on the Sign Up Genius, so it wouldn't be an MLK day, but we could say Tuesday. And they, and they could have up to 20 volunteers. So that would be another option. Um, and then I have a whole list of places that I found that are nonprofits in Norwood that need to be contacted. So we wanted to see if we just kind of want to divvy up the list and have everybody contact somebody. Sure. Um, some of them, like, like Alloy was on the list, but that's not really a nonprofit. So they're not for profit, but I couldn't picture them doing volunteer work there. And then the living room is also a not profit, N not a nonprofit. Um, so, do you want to take a list, look at the list, and just put your name by the one you'll contact? And then. It, how long is the list? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Sixteen. Do you have like a general spiel that you say? Or send? Um, I could I could write it. Just sort of like we're doing this thing. We did it last year. We had some volunteers. Would you be open to hosting some volunteers on MLK Day? Um, no, we're closed that day. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. Um, Are we giving them like an estimation? Like if I would say how many, so for example, um, Zion Church, how many volunteers do you want? Do you want? And should we warn them? If and we, the, no, because we're we going to keep track as people. Yes, because we'll have a sign up genius. Okay, we're having a sign up genius. Okay, that's really what I was asking. Okay, Sorry. so we'll have a sign up genius that will say that this place has got five spots, this place has got ten spots, this place is. Got it. Um, one of the places is, you know, and like 13, 12 and above. So you could bring your kid <laughs> in school. Um, so yeah, how many how many volunteers would you like to host? We need a contact name, uh, and we need a brief description of the work they're going to be doing. And you can see that on the MLK Day of Service, kind of what I've already gathered. Okay, do you want to split the list evenly and everybody can reach out to the three or four? Sure. Okay, just cut her. And do you want to just do that? So I just want to just cut, slice, cut it, just slice, okay. and dice. It out. slice and dice. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, excluding the ones you've already reached out to. Of course, okay. But. And then once we get the results, send them to you or? Yes. Them? Send them to me and I will add them to the sign up genius. Okay, so just for clarification purposes, I call whatever. Mm hmm. Keith's volunteer well, Keith place. Keith's business. Keith's place. Keith's clothing store. And I'm like, oh, but it's a nonprofit, right? right? So I'm like, hey, we're doing a day of service in Norwood. Could you use volunteers on the 18th or whatever the date 16th. is? 16th. 16th. If so, how many? What kind of work do you have for them to do? What times, mm -hmm. et cetera? Contact name, phone number. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Would you be able, willing and able to host volunteers? Got it. And you can't, you know, can say, I can't guarantee you volunteers, but I had volunteer. You can I get on this list and. Mm -hmm. And we will definitely keep in contact with them. So, like, the week before, we'll reach out to everyone and say, hey, no one has signed up. Or, hey, you, we've got 12 volunteers coming. Is there anything else that you need from us? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'll be dividing up the list and sending it out? Sure, yes. Okay. Yes, please. All right.
And then I'll start working on the virtual blood drive as well. All right. And then I also have, once we've created, once we have the host locations and the social media, you know, flyer or what have you, then I want to hit all the businesses um, to let them know for their employees and the community that comes through, like Fifth Third Bank, um, uh, U.S. Bank would love to do a thing. Oh, send um, people. Right. Nice. Yeah. So I do have a list of businesses to contact, and then we can divide that up next okay. for the next part. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's also a the marketing list. So if there's anywhere else that you can think of that I didn't add, add it. Okay. Do you have these things in the DEI, the main yes. folder? Yes. Okay. It's in the MLK Day of Service and Blood Drive. Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay, cool. Is it in there? I will look there. Did you find it? Oh, that's the Marsh Park. It's in yeah, a different in folder. Yeah. Unless. It's in, Is it not in there? This is the main folder. Is there another folder? No, it should be in the main folder, unless I didn't share it. I Let me share the main folder. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm in it, I don't. Yeah, okay. I'm OK. I will figure out how to add that. OK. <laughs> when I'm. If you want to just start sharing to. OK, if I, here's the share. NorwoodOhioDEI at gmail.com. Norwood. Ohio DEI mm -hmm. at gmail at gmail.com and then I'm in there right now and, and I can then see if I get an email restricted or <laughs> anyone with a link scroll Whoa, oh. So that makes everybody editor, right? Sure, I don't know. Right, yeah. I can't guarantee the answer to that question. Okay. I think so. So it's access updated. Okay, so I just got that. Sweet. And my, I just got it. I mean, we got it oh. in our new email address. Sweet. And then it oh, is in sweet. a new Ooh, I see us. you in there. Show it, show it should be in the drive now. Oh, uh, fancy, maybe. fancy. Not in the drive. It'll be in shared with me. There it is. Okay, and then what I will do is just throw it over to the drive, and then it makes a copy in theory. Maybe not right this second, but it'll happen. <laughs> so, I promise. Oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. Done. Sweet. Look at us go. Yeah. All right. Um... And then uh, we also need to, and, and maybe this is a time, um, Bishop James, were you, did you have information on the march that you would like to share that we could put together and amplify for you? Okay. Uh, I believe Elevations is going to go out with the signs like they did last year and then on the corners and just let people hunt for about an hour. Um, and just for clarity again, to distract uh, folks who might be a little bit on the more angry side of things, we, we still are refraining from the terminology in March. We're still calling it a parade or parade. A celebration, um, even so as I'm talking to leaders. That, that, that March word really seems to rile people up. And uh, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that uh, it's still <coughs> festive because we invite children, we invite individuals with disabilities. And so since the program, even though it's our third year, it's still pretty much in its infancy stage. So we're not quite ready to, I'm not ready to make it larger. Okay. So we want to keep it to where it's normal uh, for the most part. And yes, I would 
I would encourage uh, the DEI to partner and to be a part of that. Okay. So the MLK so parade. No, that's okay. Yeah. But the Norwood, the MLK, the Norwood MLK parade, is what you'd like us to refer. Yeah, to. parade or celebration. Um, um, but the day and time is still it's to still be. Open. To, still, I reached out to the fire chief because uh, one of the things that uh, Elevation does is they give out awards to our police department, mm -hmm. to our fire department. Kelsch was one of our honorees, and Michael Gavin, who sat on the council, was our first honoree. So um, that part is still being worked out. Uh, and we will have a backup plan because of this weather all over the country. Um, we're not quite sure. The last year we did it, it was blistering. I'm not going to lie, it was cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now it just seems like God has allowed it to go up to a whole nother level. <laughs> We're also entertaining more of a virtual, putting folks out in spots, doing a virtual posting it so folks can see it, because we don't want to put the elderly um, or, or children at risk. At risk. We don't want little, little So we're really just trying kids. to back step it a little bit. Uh, but I will keep you posted. I'll send you an email and, um, and then you can call you for input. Fantastic. Okay. So it's All right. More of a Awesome. All right. I'll make sure I have that in there. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else with an MLK day, virtual blood drive? Okay. All right. Marsh Park. Um, I had a, okay. So first of all, did everybody get a chance? I know it's like 80 documents thick. The, um, <laughs> Part of me is really excited about how much documentation we have. Um, I'm pulling it up here. It looked very, I peeked into it today, and the, just the age of the documents looked intriguing. I yeah. did not really dive into anything, but this is a, a lot of great documentation. Yeah. Um, like. So I will be forwarding this on, so speaking specifically about the, um, the marker. So to get a historical marker from the state of Ohio, they have a very specific application process. <clears throat> it's very, very rigorous. Um, you have two shots at it. And um, you put in, you, you give them the documents, what you want your plaque to say. It's a certain number of, I think it's 112 um, Char characters, right? So it's very limited and it's, it's gonna be this this size, this shape. Um, and, um, but I wanna make sure that our law department reads over all the material to make sure that they agree uh, with the terminology. Cause I, cause I have been saying they essentially declared imminent domain because that is, that makes sense to me, but that's not the legal language that we would use um, because it was more of appropriating um, the property rather than it's, it's sort of the same thing as far as I'm concerned, but um, so I will be sharing this all with a law department. Um, uh, one of my questions though is uh, an Ohio marker is pretty big. I don't know if you've seen them, like they're pretty sizable. Um, and it's not a big park. So I'm curious what you guys would think about not, I'm, I'm torn, so I want other people's thoughts on this. Sure. There's something very big stamp to have the state of Ohio historical marker. And I think that this site is worthy of that. It's also a big sign. We could do one, and it also costs $3,000 that we would have to pay for. And we, meaning we could raise money, we could write a grant, maybe the city could pay for it. Um, Keith Moore said he thought that the city would pay for it. Um, and he would have a better sense than I would. Um, the other option is we would go through the Norwood Historical Society and we could do a smaller thing 
we could say what we think. You know, we could potentially have more characters or less characters. We could have pictures. We could also do both. We could have the big historical marker and then the historical society could make smaller, like informative things that talk about, I don't know, like the, the history of Norwood or a little bit more in depth about John P. Parker, whose widow lived in Norwood. Um, so I've been kind of just wrestling with that and wanted your, your thoughts. How big is big? As big as that table. Bronze. There's one outside the pharmacy. Yeah. Tour, tour. You think that would be too big? They feel big. They might just... <laughs> What's well, too big. Oh, so we can do measure the. When you say too big, I'm mm-hmm. expecting like. I mean, if it was. Uh, like, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, yeah, there's too big. Is there's. It really I is about it, the size of that table. Is this is it the shape of this table? I have too, right? Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is sort of squarish. Yes. No, it's, I, mean, I, I, I would like that. Okay. And then I like the idea of the smaller ones, and then if we can do like art pieces or murals or something, it can kind of that art piece would go with whatever those plaques say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe. So no, okay. So I'm just trying, I'm thinking, okay. I'm looking at it from all different angles. I would say, I don't think that's too big. Okay. No. I agree, not too big. Go ahead. I like the idea of both mm-hmm. because you have something that's kind of, you can have even locals contribute to, to the local one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then put it at two different places, maybe along the path or just something, you know. But I also was thinking you can make, if you, if it's a thing of um, timing, you know, apart from the size of it, then um, I think that would be a good, um, like, year or two long-term goal for, the, the, for this body to mm-hmm. achieve, you know, mm-hmm. and to be able to point to, like, so we could have the, the local one that the residents participate in and let them know that we're working on this. The big one. So the big one would be due March 31st. Um, and we're about ready to go. Um, uh, Chris Hanlon is, um, he's, he doesn't live in Norwood, but uh, he is a local historian. Um, well, he's an architect. He's a retired architect who loves history and found out about this park and wrote an article that's in that, um, yeah, in there. And so he is responsible for the vast majority of historical documents. The man is amazing. Um, uh, yeah, so the, the maps and um, the, the articles, he's done all of that. Um, uh, he also wrote the historical marker, um, the proposed text draft, um, 125 words per side, not including the title and sponsor. So the plan was on one side to do about the Marsh Park, and on the back side, uh, do it about, uh, um, Miranda Parker, who was John P. Parker's widow. That's the big one. That that would be on the big one. Yeah. So you can pay you pay a little extra, and um, so so what I will be doing is passing on this draft and all the documents to our law department to make sure that they say yes, this is an appropriate use of terminology, and we agree with this, and then we will. Um, and then you also have a statement of significance, like why do we care about this? And so we'll write that up as well, and then submit it to the um, Ohio um, Historical Society, and then their historians who will review all the documents, verify them all, um, and then say yay or nay, which we might not know until the spring, and then they have to go to the foundry to make the thing. So. Um, we would probably know by this spring, but we wouldn't have it in hand until, depending on how long that takes. Um, uh, but uh, Chris Hanlon and I are going to Union, um, the Union Terminal, the museum, to look at um, uh, the 
John P. Parker historical documents because there might be some additional information about Norwood in there. So we're doing that on January the 6th. So I might have some additional information at that point that we want to put in. Um, but then I can share the document with everybody to make sure that, you know, more eyes, making sure that we haven't misspelled anything. Or, sure. um, so that will be upcoming. Um, and then in terms of like the park and the art in that, um, I have spent some time, just as I do, Googling, um, which tab is it? Ideas for Marsh Park, that's my tabs. Um, and I did reach out to a local woman. Uh, she, she, uh, I think she created artworks uh, and um, is no longer with them, but so she's an amazing local woman who knows how to do this kind of work. So I talked with her tonight and she gave me some really good ideas about um, uh, you know, making sure everyone, we've got buy-in from the different places, and um, one of her ideas, so there's a, there's kind of a ratty basketball area there where I don't think you really could play basketball right now, um, and we could possibly look for funds to resurface that and do a mural on that. So that would be a possibility. Another would be, you know, I've talked about the, the mural pathway. So the sort of the next step would be for us to just brainstorm ideas. I can share this document. You guys can take a look. It has things like about the mosaic pathway, some interactive art that I thought would be interesting. Um, and these are just ideas. Um, so also we need to connect with the school um, and maybe with the art department and see if they have ideas and thoughts and suggestions is then also with the Norwood Art Board. Uh, and then also the parks, because uh, we would need the parks committee to make sure that they're on board. I'm on the parks committee, so they are kind of aware that this is happening, but we would need for, you know, oh, you're putting what, where? We didn't know about that. So make sure that they also have, have um, awareness and buy-in, and of course talk to the mayor and that kind of thing. Uh, but so for right now, uh, I will also share this document, which is more of my notes. Um, um, yeah, and the Permission Parks Committee. Having a park map, I think, would be great, which I don't know that we have. There's one by the community center that shows right But does it show the actual park? Mm. Like a... Because what's currently at the park is a shelter, the kind of not great basketball set, a couple mature trees, lots of open space, and a play set which is outdated. It's not awful. Um, but also, again, doing, um, like, knocking on doors and meeting with the neighbors and, like, having a, you know, hey, we're going to have a community meeting on this day and time. We'd love for you to come and talk about, you know, Marsh Park, how do you use it, when we're thinking about these ideas, do they sound good to you? Like one of the ideas was um, a lot of parks are now having like interactive music. Have you seen these? Like there's um, like um, I'm looking at you because you're our resident <laughs> musician. Um, she's like that. Nah. Um, uh, they have like drums that are like cemented in. Yeah. And so you, so you play with the music at the park. I don't imagine that would be loud enough that it would disturb neighbors, but I don't know. Park hours of dawn to dusk. You know what I mean? But but so I want to be mindful that neighbors aren't be like, why did you do this? Am I? I don't want to. It's actually a fair point. I don't want to hear this. Bongo drums, knock yeah, that off. Right. right. Um, I suppose some people hate kids and music, but you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's. I. I was on social media looking at a park opening. Uh, it's called Music Garden at Highfield Discovery Garden. Yep, I think that's on my list. Okay, which is part of Great Park. So um, there's like a little stage um, so kids can do like a performance or something they want within the parameters. I mean, I don't know that they would. It's a little stage. It's so. teeny tiny, right? And just for the purpose of being to say like. Like a pretend play. Yeah, like, like you get up there and do something. Yeah, if you're with your friends or whatever you want to do. But I think maybe there are those little drum things over here. 
maybe, or there's, looks like drumsticks, maybe you can bang on that thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, that would be, um, it's brand new. I cannot imagine the cost of this equipment, but yeah. um, I think it's a little bit scaled down from what's at Smail. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, which looks even more expensive. Um, so, yeah, so, it, and this is like a pretty small footprint, so I think it could fit what we're um, looking for. But yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. But yeah, maybe we ask in the door knocking. Hey. Yes. But I think it would be also helpful for us to have a couple of ideas that we could present and then um, look at, let's say, we want to do a mosaic pathway. Well, we need to find out how much is that going to cost. Is how much, you know, because public works would have to be involved. Or do you guys have the time to dig this out? Um, and then where would we find the grant funding for it? Um, so the first thing, I think, is just sort of gathering some ideas together. And um, so if you just want to dump in any other additional resources um, into this document, that would be awesome. Is, is there a park master plan? There is. Is this one on there? It is not. Okay. So the parks master plan, um, Emily Franzen, the councilwoman who's the chair of that committee, did the big parks audit. And this one was not really on the list in terms of this park needs help. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, it's a fine park. It's fine, yeah. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Um, so this would be separate from that. Okay. Um, so we would not want to take funding from the, the crucial parks, which were um, Burwood, Victory, and Lindner, no, Millcrest. Okay. Um, those are the ones that, that scored in most need. So that's where the Parks Committee is gonna be focusing their efforts okay. um, on creating that. So we're kind of separate from that. Okay. Um, it would be sort of just like a bonus for them. Okay, do you think, with the length of time that it may take to get the marker, that I don't know what the like could we maybe roll into the master plan at some point in the future with Marsh Park just to get more monies because I feel like what what would we have to do I mean like we I, have to raise money to get this stuff I think we could write a grant okay that would give us a big chunk of money in okay. particular because of the relevance of the project okay Re okay related to that okay I could be wrong, but um, there's probably something out there. Uh, I met with Colleen Reynolds, who is a um, she was running for state rep, and then when they were moving all the mats around, um, she's like, "Well, now I'm running against like my friend who I would vote for, so I'm not going to do that." Mm -hmm. So she um, decided not to run. But she is a lobbyist, and she actually worked was contracted. Um, she might still be by the city of Silverton. And that's all she does is find them grant money. Okay. And when I was talking to her about this, it's been a year, I guess. That's been over a year. She's like, we can get you money. Cool, cool, cool. So um, I, once we have a better sense of what we want to do, yeah. I'm going to connect with her again. OK, and the rest of us are going to add suggestions to the Marsh Park. What yes, was the ideas for Marsh Park. I think ideas I shared it with you. Marsh. Okay, but let I, me make sure. But I, it says shared with one person. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Oh boy, another inbox. Here we go. Uh, let me go back up. Oh, there for you. Woo! Look at this go. <laughs> <laughs> and then back on over here, and then share with me, and it should be. Boom, right there. Coolio. Sweet. Oh my god, I say Coolio too. Coolio. All right. Separated at birth. <laughs> Wait, you and I or you and Coolio? You and I. Okay. <laughs> I love that idea. I love both actually. <laughs> um, okay. So I think it would be great for us to maybe get on the calendar a couple subcommittees because we're definitely gonna need to meet again about the MLK Day of Service. Yeah. Um, and I can say you don't need to be on that because I'm gonna make you do lots of other things. Not make you, request of you. Sure. <laughs> request of you. Um, so, how, so then we can have three people on 
up to three people on the MLK Day of Service. So that would be me and two other people. Who else wants to meet with me for MLK Day of Service? I don't mind calling people. I mean, I'm, okay. I don't so mind we'll have you. Things, what I should say. Let's have. I'll meet with them, and then, and then you and I can talk separately about the calls that you've made. That's fine. Right? That works. Yes. Sunshine. Be careful. Don't talk about what you two, you three talk about. Right. Because then that's a four-person meeting. That's a four-person meeting. Yes. Right. Are you? Is, so inside business hours, outside business hours. I'm better outside of business hours. I can do outside of business makes hours. The decision. I'm completely flexible. So. Completely flexible. He's a gymnast. Yes. <laughs> okay. Can the three of us oh, look at a time shit. next week that works? There's a, there's a place in the gym. Mm. <laughs> you said uh, next week? Yeah. Just... That was me. I know. I wasn't going to call you out. <laughs> I can do any day except Monday the second because that is a very important holiday. Monday the second. Yes. Is it your birthday? No. Is the it? Bills are playing the Bengals. Might be it. And holiday. The Bills are going to. And you gonna, said Bill, I was like, oh my god. The Bills are going to school is that the Bengals. I want those too. <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, so any other day, I can meet. Okay, with both of us, or yeah. is it one, no. two, three? Okay, with us, us three. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> next week seems to be, uh, yeah, fourth, fifth, fourth or fifth, I guess Wednesday. Wednesday seems like a decent meeting day, or Thursday, I could do either. The fourth what about you, Derek? Uh, fourth or fifth is fine. Pick one. Busy schedule. Let's do the Wednesday. Wednesday? Fourth, yeah. Okay. Name your time. Um, I'm six is good for me. I could probably even swing 5.30. They're on the fourth, the civil services meeting here, I think. Yeah. Okay. We can so, meet in the council yeah, I just chambers. Wanna, conference room. Yeah. Conference room. Yeah. I just want to then um, just send an email to Sharon to reserve it, just to make sure that no one else needs it. I mean, it's in the evening, so yeah. it's probably not, but you never I can do that. City Hall at 5.30 or 6? Is, is 5.30? 5.30. 5.30, okay. Perfect. Done. Okay, and since it's a committee meeting, we do not need to advertise it. Asking or telling? I'm confirming in my brain. <laughs> we do not. But I guess if anybody else wants to come and share their thoughts or make some phone yeah, calls. We don't advertise the council meetings. We do, but this is a subcommittee of a board, and that's different. I just want to make sure. I can double check. <laughs> so Keith's here, so that's I'll fine. double check with Keith, but I'm pretty sure we don't need to. Do we have sunshine wall? Oh, no, here it is. So, I guess what's the difference between a committee and a subcommittee in this sense? I guess it's a committee of the board? Yeah, it's a, no, then a subcommittee would be a committee, committee of the committee. Of the committee. I, I think I'm using them interchangeably. <laughs> I'll ask Keith. Yeah. I'm writing that down. I didn't know you could have a subcommittee if you don't have Susan a confirmed. Yeah. I mean, we can always make it public. I mean, I don't care. It's just a matter of setting out the agenda. So in his notes from the last meeting, it doesn't say anything specifically, I don't think, about subcommittees, which I think is, was like a, an offshoot, which gave us permission to meet and discuss outside of the meeting. Right. But, the, but so it doesn't say whether you need to. We, I will double check. Yeah. Again, I don't have a problem advertising it. I think that's our. Not loophole, <laughs> but I think that's our freedom, I guess, to that's my kind understanding. of casually yeah. meet without making it public. But like you said, someone who is not on this organization board 
could come and share right because right. we can't do more than three right only us three can be there but more other people could be there no i think if you actually scheduled the meeting more people could be there we would have to have quorum right. so you would have to have more of a the whole three thing is just so you don't have quorum so i guess it would be Because you have to quorum. But have a meeting, right? I don't know. Just don't tell, just don't tell anybody. Okay. Yeah. No, run it by. Just make sure that we don't need this to. This is new to all of us. <laughs> he knows. He also would rather I ask and be yeah. careful Told again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, I agree with that. I did a quick Google. I feel like you might have to publicize it. Oh, okay. Well, if we publicize it, then you could come too. That's true. I know, what is that? That's like one Trump, like... I said, she could come and not say anything. If the committee has people... You have to sit in the court. It's not the quorum. If the people come... Because it's still public business. business. Yeah. Public but then you would still have to have quorum of that. So you would have to have two, I mean, at least two people there. If the public comes, they can say something. Which you would. Yes. You just couldn't do it. But then if she came as part of the public... Yes. It would be not very... She couldn't say something. It's so weird. Now, if we were just out having dinner... Only three of us could be talking about business. Right. It's not so weird. Somebody would have to get up and go to the bathroom and make a three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Wow. Excuse me. I'm going to discuss this. Okay. okay. Day of service. Yeah, I would still contact Keith. Yeah. Because, uh, I'm going to ask. <laughs> yeah, double check with Keith. But double check with Keith. Like any good lawyer, I just Googled it. And, uh, <laughs> okay, cool. I, I think it works. That's what we do. And if we end up changing it so that it's public and then, any, then Alexis could come. And Shireen could come, and then you either could or couldn't come if you didn't want to. <laughs> and I'll be there. I just, I mean, I have, I think our meeting's at six, so I could be there a little bit. All right. Just depends. I'll figure it out and let posted. folks know. Okay. It's in the minutes right now. It's on the calendar. Okay. We'll be there. Sweet. All right. I think we are, that is everything on my list. Are there any additional items? I don't think so. All right. Would anyone in the audience like to add a thought? Well, I think it's uh, beautiful to see that rural Ohio is addressing issues that matter to the city as a whole. I'm excited to see that uh, we can partner, especially when you say D and I. Those initials mean a lot to people like me. People have died, that we have certain liberties. I, for one, am a product of that energy and that passion for equality. And so I want to just see us come together more as a people, as one body. One heart, one mind, one intention, one goal, so that we're all going on. Our children can look at us as their forefathers and say, oh my gosh, your world is a place to be reckoned because each of us will be So, when you continue to strive for it, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be like we need to expect to see straight things, but we just got to keep trying. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Sweet. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No? I will call the meeting adjourned. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah. Happy New Year.